Hello and welcome to another little video from Carol's Craft Room. Um, I'm Carol Clark. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator from Northern Ireland. Uh, my website is craftycarolscards.co.uk and thank you for joining me uh, in my video today. I wanted to use this gorgeous DSP today to make a card. It's called the Thoughtful Journey, <laughs> covered it up with my, my scraps, but it's the Thoughtful Journey DSP and it's just gorgeous. There are so many beautiful scenes in it. So we've got this lovely one with the trees, we've got sort of heathery flowers there and there's, there's also um, gorgeous pictures and gorgeous colours on the backgrounds as well. So we've got some sort of red flowers there, some autumny scenes there, and um, just a sort of vaguely watercolor, watercolor lake type scene. We've got a winter forest. I'm going to make some Christmas cards with those ones, I think. Um, they're just beautiful, beautiful. I'm not showing you all the pictures here. There's so many sheets of this. It goes on forever. It is gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Um, but I wanted to show that off to its best effect. And I have made some cards uh, with this paper before, but I wanted to show you a really simple card today that just really shows off the um, the DSP. So this is my card. It's a simple gatefold card with a sentiment on the front. And I've actually used the whole sheet of paper apart from the little tiny bits I've cut off. So I've put part of the scene on both sides. And I've also included the scene inside with a little bit of white card. So I've got a room to write some sort of greeting there. You could, of course, have a complete white piece there. And I'll show you a version that's got that um, when I'm making the card uh, for you just now. But I hope you like that. It's a very simple fold. I'll give you all the measurements in a minute. The sentiment, by the way, I've used the So Sincere stamp set and I'm going to use the So Thankful For You as well. That was hope you're feeling better soon. You've got hope your day's a happy one. Your kindness is appreciated. So many lovely, lovely sentiments. You're in my heart and prayers, um, which I might use inside. Oh, no. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Um, so very proud of you. There's a vertical happy birthday, which can be very useful and actually looks good on a gatefold card. So loads of lovely sentiments there. So let's go through how to make this card. So we need, oh, I've got my bits over here and I've got various bits to show you the, the potential for, for both. I've actually used this piece of DSP that's got the trees and the flowers on because um, I quite liked this frond in the in the bottom here and um, so that is just one piece of dsp six by six dsp with your scene on and um, you could use pattern dsp for this and with any other stamp set it will still make a beautiful card the piece of card you want is our normal size card base so it's the width of a4 or 21 centimeters by 14.8 but we're not going to score it in the middle we're going to score it at either side so it's a little bit fiddly in centimetres, um, 21 centimetres or for inches, that's eight and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So eight and a quarter inches. Um, and you want to score it at one quarter and three quarters. So obviously you've got to do a little bit of maths for it. Um, in centimetres, it's five and two, 5.25 centimetres, which means midway between the five centimetre mark and the five and a half centimetre mark. So you've got four little centimetre, centimetre millimetre um, marks in the middle and you want to go across two and then halfway to the next one. So can you see, I hope you can see that. Um, I haven't got an, an option to, um, to focus it in anymore, I'm afraid, but that hopefully you can see that it's sort of between the second mark, which is there, and the third mark, which is there. I've just gone between them. So I've just split that. I've made sure the card is well um, jutted up there. And I am going to then, oh, I can move that, just score that. Okay, so that's 5.25. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Um, or you could move it along and do it at 15.75 if you want, but I want to keep it simple. 5.25 on either side. Now in inches, you want to go two and one sixteenth. So the sixteenths are the smaller um, marks here. So two and one sixteenth is exactly the same as 2.25, as you can see. So inches, two and one sixteenth. Um, and if you're doing it all the way along, it would be six and three sixteenths. Um, 
and 15.75 or just 5.25 or 2 and 1 16th of an inch from both ends. So you end up with a card that looks a little bit like this. So you've got two crease marks in it and that's what forms the gatefold. So we're now going to fold those pieces over and when you're folding them over, just make sure they've exactly lined up top and bottom and then use your bone folder to give it a really good crease because we, the gatefold doesn't tend to stay completely closed, this particular card. You can make a belly band to go round it. Um, I haven't on this card, but it does keep it closed if you want to. But as most people are going to have it open on the mantelpiece, I don't think it matters too much. So there's the gatefold card. And when you fold it, as with this, as you can see, it should join exactly in the middle. So that's, you've just got to be really sort of careful as you fold it across. So then if we get the DSP, I've just lost my piece of DSP. Where did I get that? Oh, it's over there. <laughs> There we go. So we're going to cut this now. As I say, you can choose the side. That side's beautiful as well. Anyway, I'm going to use the tree side and I want to use the two edge pieces for the two sides here. So I'm going to cut them at each side. So the DSP size, it needs to be, I'll do the length first. We need 14.3. So I will be needing to lose a little bit off the bottom, but I don't think it matters. I've got enough of that leafy plant there. So we're going to go 14.3 or in inches, that's 5.58. We're doing it on the same size as us. There we go. Um, and then we're going to cut the two side panels. So we're going to cut these at four and an eighth 4.8 centimetres or 1 and 13 sixteenths. So 13 sixteenths is actually there. It's slightly smaller than 4.8. I decided 4.8 was better. Four and uh, 1 and 14 sixteenths or 7 eighths is, um, you, could, you could use that. It's a little bit tight, but it, it will work okay. So that's the one for one side here. And then rather than cut this middle bit, which is, looks a bit strange, I'm going to cut it from this side. So I'm going to turn it through 180 degrees and again put it at 4 and 4.8 centimetres and then cut that bit off. Now that leaves me this piece that in the other card, I did actually use that in the, in the middle. And um, I'm not going to with this, it just there's it just doesn't look right there's no nice sort of pattern on i've got a little bit of a tree which looks a bit strange so i'm actually going to use a complete piece of basic white for the center and this piece is um our normal layer which is nine and a half centimeters by 13.8 centimeters or three and three quarters by five if you're working in inches so I am going to stamp this before I put it in. And I decided to use oops, my Boho Blue. I should have said this is Boho Blue, this card. It matches the matches the, the paper and the colour of the sky, so I liked it. So I'm using the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set because it's got this sort of from picture, which I think matches this quite nicely. So I'm going to use that stamp. The dies are falling off there. Need to put those back. Stick that back on. There we go. So I'm going to use this little frond stamp here, just as a bit of a decoration for the inside. So I will need a scrap of disgusting scrap of paper that I use all the time, which is fine, because <laughs> I'm going to obviously stamp so that it comes off the edge of this paper, because I just want it on the corner there so I'm gonna ink up that stamp make sure it is inked nicely and then get as much of the frond in as I want on my card there so that's the inside of the card done and while I'm at it I'm going to stamp my envelope in the same way so I'm going to have some nice frondy bits down at the bottom of the envelope too. Now I could colour those in if I want. I'm just going to leave them like that. Um, you could colour them in, you could put a bigger image in. There's so many things you could do if you wanted, but I'm just going to leave mine like that, I think. I 
there. Although actually if I coloured them in a little bit, it would match more match the picture, the picture on the front, wouldn't it? Hmm, who knows? <laughs> I decided to do it, by the way, I could have used um, one of the greens. I could have used probably something like Old Olive, something like that, um, to stamp this. But I, I wanted to match the card for inside and it just looks nicer, I think, if it's tone on tone. That's just my own personal idea. You can obviously do whatever you want yourselves. I'll just put that stamp away. And the only other thing we have to stamp is the sentiment. So you just want a, a, a scrap. Um, and I'm, I'm using the sentiment, so thankful for you. Again, I want to, to match the card base. So I'm using the boho blue. So ink that up and stamp it there somewhere because I want to die cut it. Let's clean that stamp. And close my pad before I put my fingers in it, which is my usual trick. Now to cut it out, um, for this one, I actually used one of the lovely unbounded what is it unbounded love yes unbounded love dies these these are lovely outline dies i use this one which actually cuts an outline and a center so i cut the center out from my stamping which has got a mark on i must deal with that in a minute a little bit of stickiness um and then the outline i cut in the this is um misty moonlight actually different blue so the outline is misty moonlight so I cut that out as well, which gave me a piece that was the same size as this white piece. And I used just a little bit of it to fill in the back. So it looked nice when I turned it over. I haven't got a sudden white bit sticking out. So I'm not going to quite use the same one. I think I might use this one this time um, because I think it fits better in that shape. Now that hasn't got an edge to it, so I don't think. No, it hasn't. So. It's just going to have a, a sort of shape on it. I may stick it on a piece of the, hmm, should I stick it on a piece of the blue? I think I just might. Is that going to fit? I think it is just. <laughs> right. So where is my little bit of, there we go. just want a little bit of tape to hold that in place. And if I can clear some room and actually get some space here, I can get my, die cutting machine it bangs as I open it so place that on there and the other slightly at an angle if I can <clears throat> because it cuts better if it's slightly at an angle and I'm overlapping my plates um, so that they're sort of jiggled a little bit it's gone a bit straight I like to have it, if possible, any die with a straight edge, I like to have at an angle to put through the machine. It does seem to go through the machines better if you do that. So I've just got that at a slight angle and we'll run it through. Let's put that out of the way down there for now. And put my plates out of the way. And there we have, take off the, oh, my temporary tape has decided to stick. There we go. So as you can see, this, this die has cut it out. It's got a little bit of an edge around it. It's given it a sort of border. Whether that's going to be enough, I think I might stick it on a piece of the, a spare piece of my boho blue and actually stick that down actually. So let me just, Tidy this up and put that die away before I lose it. There we go. That's a scrap. So it's an, a matter now of putting the card together. Um, I'm going to go to, to stick this on. I'll just need a, a scrap of boho blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it on, leaving myself a border, and then I'm going to carefully trim around so that I can have a little bit more of a border around here. So stick that on first. And I want about that size of border so I can just then trim around it 
just using my scissors. So a fairly, it would help if that was straight, wouldn't it? Let's try that again. Just straighten it up a little bit. There we go. That's better. <laughs> so I've got the same, that was a very wonky, wonky stick. So I'm just going to follow the line of the die cut. Could use the trimmer, I suppose, across the bottom, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to eyeball it with some scissors. There we go. Let's cut that off like that. And then I can just cut round this end bit in the same way. So I've got a, a little border around my die cut. So even though I haven't got a die that fits that, as you can see, I can just, just cut it with scissors, eyeball it and it'll look nice. And I like to have a backing on because this is going to stick on and overlap some of the card. So it won't look too different when I've stuck it on. If I'd left it just with the white piece, it to me, it would look too odd. So we just have to put this card now together. So very simply, I'm not going to put any other um, greeting inside because um, I like to to leave things blank. When I'm doing a thanks card, I like to leave it blank because I like to just write a personal greeting inside. Perhaps somebody's bought something from me or I just want to thank them for something nice they've done or I don't know, whatever it is. Because I don't know exactly when I'll use the card, leave it blank, just have some decoration in it and then I'm, I can just, uh, just write whatever I want to whoever the recipient is. So these are going that way round. Just checking because I've moved them since I cut them. Probably best to cut them and stick them straight on. <laughs> there isn't a problem. But so that is my right hand panel, which will go on this right hand side here. So the sizes I've given you just leave a little bit of a as you can see, a little bit of a border all the way round. Um, I didn't want any other colour on there. Sometimes you can put a double layer on, but I, I just want it to blend into the colour of the cardstock below. So there's no other layer on this, just the sing single layer of DSP as the decoration. Keeping it simple, it's such a simple card. You could run so many of these off at once if you wanted. Um, see, up to you but I think it's a nice, simple card. So there's my pattern. Obviously, I've still got my half tree there, but I'm not too bothered about that because it actually runs, this runs across quite nicely. Um, and it's going to be fine when somebody gets it. So now I need to stick this on. You could use dimensionals if you wanted. Um, I think I'm not going to. Um, I just, just want it to sort of sit against the card. The important thing is only put glue on half of it or however however far you want it on the inside. You don't want it to go over. So if I'm sticking this on here, see how I've just got the glue on the one side of it. So I'm going to stick it slightly more to the left than the right. Like that. Make sure it's stuck down there. And then when we open it, we've just got the continuation of the colour. And I can write on the inside to let people know what I want. So there's my envelope to go with it. And then we have this one as well, just to show you a slightly different colour. This is Misty Moonlight as the background, slightly more fiddly um, way to make that, but it still worked OK. I hope you like these cards and I hope you'll have a go. If you've got any DSP, if you've got this particular DSP or um, any scenic DSP, it just works so well with these sorts of cards. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I have given you the measurements. They are going to be written down in my blog as well, which you can find out find at craftycarolscards.co.uk. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do so, because I'd love to see you again soon. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.